I always had an interesting relationship with CSS. Coming from a backend development background, where I did most of my work in real programming languages like Java, CSS seemed like this silly little language I could master in a weekend. However, when building products for real use cases, you'll soon realize that UI and UX play a way bigger role in the success of a solution than you initially imagined. As a consequence, I started spending more time working with CSS. It was interesting to discover that, despite being fairly straightforward, there is a lot of complexity in writing styling rules. Let me explain. Writing these rules with no structure and planning can only take you so far. The real headaches start when you are attempting to write reusable components in a scalable and maintainable manner. So, in the past, I did it all. The BAM methodology, object-oriented CSS, SAS and CSS modules. For a long time, the scoped CSS module approach was my preferred choice, but then I discovered Tailwind. After a slow start and a lot of concerns, I was able to see the value in Atomic CSS and Utility classes. Don't worry, this video is not about Tailwind, but you can find the recommendation in the top right corner if you are interested in that. Today we look at Uno CSS, a lightweight, flexible and performant Atomic CSS engine. I already initialized a basic front-end project and, for the next few minutes, we look at Uno CSS internals while building some UI components. By the end of the video, you should have a pretty good understanding of the tool and, hopefully, you'll find value in adding an Atomic CSS engine in your next project. There are a couple of core concepts I'd like to clarify since these are the building blocks behind Uno CSS. Keep all this in mind since, I believe, there is a paradigm shift in the way we style our apps and these ideas will be very valuable moving forward. By the way, all this information is also laid out in detail in a blog post authored by the creator of Uno CSS. Concept number one, Atomic CSS. This is the idea of creating single-purpose classes with very few lines of CSS, each class targeting a very specific visual effect. Let's look at an example to illustrate this in action. Say we have a button class which will apply the following styles to our DOM element. A purple background, a white text color, and a border radius. This works well and is straightforward, but what happens with all the elements in your app which might have the same border radius? Well, you'd probably define a CSS variable and apply the same CSS rule over and over again for all the needed elements. In Atomic CSS, we are going to split these rules in separate classes. So we'll have a BG purple class for our background rule, a text white class for the text color, and a round class for our border radius. This looks like a bit more work, but now any element that needs a border radius can simply use the round class. Of course, this can be extrapolated to all CSS rules. So, instead of spending time writing the same CSS rules again and again, you'd end up not touching any CSS and style your components directly via utility classes. The real power of this approach is revealed when a tool such as Uno generates all those utility classes and styling rules for you. This brings us to the second core concept behind Uno CSS, on-demand CSS generation. Again, let's look at an example to understand this. Unified solutions to handle paddings and margins are common in any type of CSS library. Atomic CSS tools solve this fairly easily. They have a default spacing scale, which is iterated, and associated classes are generated in return. However, this will generate classes and spacing rules you will never use, so a subsequent purging or cleaning step has to be performed to get rid of unnecessary rules. Uno avoids all these extra steps by analyzing the in-use classes and only generating the necessary rules based on the input. Ok, let's take a deeper look at the code I've been working on. At the beginning of this video, you've seen me adding the Uno preset in the vidconfig file. Presets are the heart of Uno CSS. They let you make your own custom framework in minutes. There are a bunch of official presets and even more community ones. We'll get back to some of these in a second, since they can really change and improve your dev experience. You'll see that the most classes I'm using are pretty self-explanatory. Since Uno CSS is an engine, it is able to identify custom classes I'm using and generate the appropriate rules for me. So, while you would not find a margin 45 pixels or a BG light gray class in their documentation, Uno is smart enough to understand what I want in these specific situations. Now, let's have a serious conversation. If you are like me a few months back, you are probably wondering why would you ever follow this approach. I agree, these HTML templates are starting to look like a mess. However, if you didn't close the video by now and you are still watching, there might still be a chance I can convince you that utility classes and atomic CSS are worth your time. Uno CSS acknowledges the steep learning curve you have to go through in the first weeks and it provides both an online playground and an interactive documentation. 
This allows you to search for any type of CSS rule and find the associated utility classes. I, for one, found this transition from the known CSS rules to utility classes names I had to guess the most frustrating step in working with Uno. Believe me though, after a couple of days, the guessing is not needed anymore and the class names will become familiar. Now, for the messy templates, you could either use an IDE extension to improve the dev experience or, in some cases, identify repetitive class groups and define shortcuts for them instead. We'll get to presets in a second, but first I want to showcase the flexibility behind shortcuts. On one hand, say you are not happy with the name of a utility class. This becomes even more frustrating when you need to use this class all over your project. As a solution, simply create a utility alias. On the other hand, we can create dynamic shortcuts, which will generate some pretty smart classes for us. With one simple new entry in the shortcuts configuration, we can easily enable classes and results such as these ones. Pretty impressive, right? Well, I'm not done. With variant groups, you can group together classes with common prefixes and make your templates more compact. But what happens when we are sending all these HTML to the client? Surely the resulting HTML is way longer than it needs to be. Fear not. By simply adding the compile class transformer in the config file, Uno will be able to compile a group of classes into a single class. So HTML looking like this will end up looking like this. In most CSS projects, there are two basic requirements you'll have to implement regardless of the spec. First, you'll need a quick way to force all browsers to render elements in a consistent manner. Normalize CSS is a fairly common solution, and we can import this in our project via the Uno CSS reset package. Second of all, most of the time, you need a way to add some global general CSS rules. We can easily do this as a preflight in the configuration file. Okay, now, for the real fun part, we'll look at Uno presets. Let's start with an easy one. Most often than not, you'll use Google Fonts in your projects. In Uno, we can set this up in just a few seconds. I am importing the web font preset and then simply defining both default and custom fonts from the Google provider. In return, the engine will take care of all the Google imports for us and will define all the necessary classes. As a result, once the preset is configured, I can simply start using my custom fonts. Icon support is another common requirement in most UI work. The icons preset is extremely powerful and, the chances are, once you'll get used to it, all alternatives of working with icons will seem a waste of time. Uno uses Iconify as its data source for icons. Once you have the dependencies installed and the correct configuration in place, you'll gain access to all the utility classes you should expect by now. Hey, by the way, if you are finding this type of content useful, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Back to presets, I mentioned multiple times the flexibility of Uno. To prove this, let's take a look at the Attributify mode for Uno CSS. Again, we can easily install and set this up in the configuration file. As a result, we can now use HTML attributes to style our components. This option is controversial and some would argue it goes against the utility classes approach. However, I find this option interesting and I can see how it might be appealing to better group together the styling information. In the same line, the Tagify preset allows you to take things one step further and use HTML tags to embed your CSS styles. If you decide to go on this route, please take into consideration using a tag prefix, since you might run into conflicts between Uno CSS tags and other custom components you might add further down the road. Let me know in the comments what your opinion is about this engine and if you see Uno CSS as a real alternative for writing CSS in your project. Until next time, thank you for watching.